Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat in which we would look at the equity method. This topic is covered in financial accounting, intermediate accounting, and much, much more in depth in a course called Advanced Accounting. I do have intermediate and, co and advanced accounting on my YouTube channel. This topic is also covered heavily on the CPA exam. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,700 plus accounting, auditing, tax, and finance lectures. This is a list of all the courses that I covered, including many CPA questions. Connect with me on Instagram, like my lectures, share them. If they benefit you, it means they might benefit other people. Also on my website, farhatlectures.com, you will have additional resources to supplement your accounting education or study for the CPA exam. A lot of multiple choice, true, false, exercises, notes, PowerPoint slides to supplement your education. The prerequisite for this recording, because this is about investments, you can check for the prerequisite in the description. So let's talk about equity investments. So when we invest in equity, when we buy stocks, how how do we account for those investments? So when company A buys stocks in company B, well, it all depends on your ownership level. Do you own less than 20%? If you own less than 20%, we will use either the cost or the market value method because here we are assuming you have insignificant or you lack significant influence. Simply put, you have no saying in the company. If you own less than 20% of a particular company, you have no saying in that company. Therefore, it's you lack significant influence and this is the uh, method that we looked at in the prior session you could click at the description if you own between 20 to 50 percent you would use something called the equity method now this is what we're going to be looking at today the equity method here you assume to have here you assume to have significant influence here you have significant influence what does that mean it means you can vote the board of directors uh, you can vote yourself to be one um, you can be, maybe assign, uh, ass, uh, get a position in management. So you have some influence. Therefore, you would use the equity method. If you own more than 50%, well, here, once you own 50% plus, you become a major, the, the majority shareholder. Now you have to consolidate the financial statements. And this is what you would learn in my advanced accounting course, where you would learn about consolidation. And we don't cover this in financial accounting. This is an introductory course. So how do we account for investments in equity securities with, with significant influence? Well, in this course, it's pretty simple, but it's very important that you learn the simple, learn the basics. Because once you learn the basics and in intermediate, we don't add that much to this topic, but believe me, in, 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 uh, in advanced accounting, we're going to to add a lot about this equity method. So the first thing is when you buy the investment, just like every other investments, every other assets, it's initially recorded at cost. Then the, the investment, that investment is increased. It's gonna increase by the proportionate share of the investee's earning, huh? What does that mean? It means you're gonna wait until your investee, the company that you invested in, report their earning. And if you own 30% of the company, you're going to increase your investment by 30% of the earning that they reported. Guess what? If they report losses, you're going to reduce your investments by 30% of their losses. Then you are going to increase, dec decrease your investment account by dividend received. So let me show you the T account. We'll explain this later a little bit more in details. So this is what we have. We have an account called investment in equity so you have some sort of an equity investments and here's what's going to happen every time you have net income it's going to increase your investments every time you have a net loss it's going to reduce your investment and every time you have dividend it's going to reduce your investment don't worry we'll explain why dividend reduce your investment shortly when we work with numbers it's easier to see it with numbers so let's take a look at an example to see how this all fits first you're going to buy an investment january 1st micron Record a purchase of 3,000 shares representing 30% of star common stock at a total of 70,650. Now, here's what I want you to kind of look for the first. Notice they told you you purchased 30%. It means you, you are, you're going to be using the equity method. On the CPA exam or in the homework, they may not tell you explicitly you're going to be using the equity method. They assume since it's 30%, you're going to be using the equity method. So let's take a look at the journal entries. First one we purchase. Simply put, we debit the investment, long star 
investment, long-term investment star in credit cash, basically recorded at cost. Now, what we do, we wait until star reports their earning. And star reported $20,000 in net income, and they paid out half, half of them, 20, uh, half of them in cash dividend, which is 10,000. So remember, when they report net income, we qualify for 30% of that. Basically, it's our net income. And what's going to happen with that 20,000 times 30%, that's 6,000. We are going to increase our investment by 6,000. So we're going to increase this investment by 6,000. And, and then on the second slide, we're going to see all the T account entries. And we're going to credit basically an earnings account, basically a revenue account. Earnings from long-term investments, $7,000. That's done. Now, they also paid us $10,000 in... Uh, they paid $10,000 in cash, in cash dividend. How much are we going to get? We're going to get 30% of that, which is $3,000. Excellent. We're going to debit cash, $3,000. What are we going to credit? Well, the key here is to, is to remember we're using the equity method. What does that mean? Remember what we said. When you receive dividend, it's going to reduce your investment. And the answer is why. Well, here's why. Here's what they did. Remember, dividend, this cash, this $3,000 cash is coming from your earnings. It's coming from net income. All what they did is they're giving you $3,000 in cash, which, which means they are, okay, it's coming from your revenue or it's coming from your asset. It's coming from, from assets and revenue that you generated in your investing. Now, all what they're doing is they're giving you the cash. So what they did they took the invest they took the investment that you have in their company and turned part of it into cash so of the six thousand dollar that you had in your investment they paid it out in cash well you did receive the cash that's excellent but you cannot consider this revenue again you cannot say i'm going to credit dividend revenue because if you say i'm going to credit dividend revenue then your revenue equal to nine thousand why nine thousand well you recorded six thousand initially then you're going to record another three thousand therefore it's not dividend revenue all what they're doing is they're giving you the earnings that you already earned and recorded as revenue so it's the the the, the credit is long-term investments therefore they're reducing your investments well that's the bad news the asset going down. Well, the good news is they gave you cash. The asset goes up. So it's that $6,000 that you have. Simply put, you have money in the bank. You have $10,000 in the bank. You went to the ATM machine and you withdrew $500. Now you have $500 in your pocket. It's the same thing. You still have $10,000. The bank account is $9,500. Now the bank has, you have in your account $9,500. But in your pocket, you have $500. So you still have $10,000. Same concept. You already... You already recorded that earnings. All what they're doing now is giving you the earnings in cash. So remember that. That's why you will credit long-term investments. So you reduce your long-term investments. Now let's take a look at the T account, what we did in this uh, in this whole thing. This is the investment account. This is the beginning. You, uh, When you purchased it at cost, you add the net earnings and the balance became 76750 Then you reduced it by 3000 by the amount of dividend. The ending balance is 73650 Now, sometime on the exam or on the homework, they're going to tell you, you sold this investment for 80000 If you sold this investment for 80000 your proceeds are for 80000 Then you have a gain for the difference. So remember, the difference now, the balance is 73000 650 so be careful about this let's take a look at an, not another example to kind of consolidate what we just learned prepare the prepare entries to record the following transaction of garcia company okay the garcia company they purchased 400 shares of lopez so garcia company we call garcia company is the parent company we share lopez as the subsidiary or garcia is also called the investor the investor and lopez is the invest t Okay, so they purchased 400 shares of the common stock uh, for 3,000. Lopez has 1,000 shares of common stock outstanding, and its policies will be slightly influenced by Garcia. Here they gave you a, a, a hint that you're going to have significant influence. And think about it. If you bought 400 out of 1,000, you own 40% now of Lopez, which is you have to use the equity method. Lopez declared dividend at $2 per share. They they announced net income of 2,500, and this is in year one. In year two, they declared and paid dividend. 
and they declared their income. Then Garcia sold 100 shares for 1300. So we're going to have to journalize these entries. Basically, that's what we are being asked to do. Now, keep in mind, here's what we have. We have the long-term investments. So under this, this is what Garcia, Garcia will have long-term investments in Lopez. And Lopez, the investee, will report the earnings. So here's what's going to happen. Lopez will, will earn net income. That's fine. Then they will generate net loss and retained earning. Then they will pay dividend and retained earnings. So this is what the investee does. So when they have income, retained earning goes up. When they have a net loss, retained earning goes down. When they have dividend, retained, retained earning goes down. Now, what's going to happen to, um, to um, Lopez, what's going to happen is the net income, the net income that Lopez, which is 40% of this net income, increases Lopez investments you know, in, in, in our situation, 40% of net income. The net loss reduces Lopez investment by that percentage, 40%, and dividend reduces Lopez investments. So let's take a look at the transactions and see how they all fit together. Just kind of journalize them. First, we purchased 400 shares for 3,000. We debit long-term investments in Lopez, 3,000, and we credit cash, 3,000. Now, the second thing is they pay dividend. Well, well, this is the entry. Let's look at the entry for each one. So the retained earning is whatever the retained earnings is. Now, Lopez, oh, so the first thing is let's look at the T account. The T account for Lopez is established long-term long investments for 3,000, okay? Now, Lopez declared and paid cash dividend of $2. When they paid cash dividend, their retained earnings goes down debit uh, and we receive uh 40 percent of that we receive 40 percent of that we is lopez so we're gonna debit cash 400 shares times two dollars 800 and we're gonna reduce lopez investments remember every time the investee pays dividend it's a reduction in our investment because our investee is reducing their value basically we reduce our value proportionally then they have a net income of 2,500. Remember, net income is going to increase Lopez's retained earnings, and that's going to increase our investment by 40% of 2,500, which is $1,000. Debit our investments, credit the earnings. So this is basically we purchased it, we received dividend, we recorded the net income. So basically here we increase our investment. Now this is the balance. Now we, we can compute this. How much is the balance? It's four thousand minus eight hundred. The balance is three thousand two hundred. Now remember that we for year two we declared and paid dividend of two twenty five, a total of twenty two fifty. Once again, we're going to receive forty percent of that, which is four hundred shares times two twenty five in cash. We reduce the investment by nine hundred. We reduce the investment by nine hundred. Then the company generated two thousand seven. 150 of earnings lopez retained earning goes up our investment goes up by 40 percent which is 2750 i'm sorry of uh, 2750 which is 1100 so this is for year two okay notice we now we could compute the new the new balance for the investment so we add 3000 plus 1000 plus 1100 which is 5000 uh 5100 minus 1700 and this will be the balance now we sold garcia sold 100 shares now we now actually i'm going to have to do this computation because we have we have to kind of know what we're doing here so let me do the computation then and you're going to see why i did this is because i want to show you when we sold 100 shares we sold one fourth or 25 percent of it so we have 5100 minus 1700 the balance is 3400 now what we did is we sold of the of the balance is 3400 we sold 0.25 one fourth of that so we multiply this by 0.25 we sold 850 of our investments for 1300 therefore we have a gain so we're going to debit cash 1300 for the cash credit lopez long-term investments again 25 percent one fourth of 3400 850 then the difference is a gain so notice we did not sell the whole investment we sold we did not sell the whole investments we sold we sold one fourth of it one fourth of it we got more than the cost of it therefore we have a 
we have a gain. Excellent. And this is an actual gain that goes on the income statement. If you like this recording, please like it, share it, put it in playlist as always. I would like to invite you to visit my website for additional resources, especially if you're studying for your CPA exam. I, I can get you those 7 to 15 extra points that you're looking for to pass the exam, put it behind you. Study hard for your accounting courses. Accounting is worth it. Good luck. And in the next recording, we would look at accounting for international operation. Good luck and stay safe.